Two major decisions coming from the courts affecting U.S. immigration policy. The Supreme Court upheld President Trump's travel ban, which restricts people from seven predominantly Muslim countries from entering the U.S. And a federal judge in California ruled families crossing the U.S.-Mexican border cannot be separated. That ruling also says the U.S. must reunite families who have already been separated. What's the impact? Well, immigration attorney Rebecca Black from here in Jacksonville joins me here on The Morning Show. Um, people are sitting back there saying, okay, well, there was an executive order. Why does the judge have to weigh in? And a couple of things struck me. The federal judge in California said that the order, the executive order, was subjective and not objective. Mm -hmm. And that the chaotic circumstance is of the government's own making. But the executive order is also really silent on the issue of reuniting families already separated or who will be in the future. And therein lies the big difference. Well, the challenge I think is going to be is that, you know, as the, as the judge pointed out, this is chaos of Trump's own making. The, he does not ever give the agency any time to come up with uh, potential plans on how anything's going to be implemented. He just says, go do, and they go do in a scramble. So I, I guarantee you that there's been no thought process of once separating these people, how you're ever going to ever reunite them in the future. And, uh, and so now that this federal judge is saying you, you can't separate them and we need to start looking at this, there's probably no plan there either. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how they're going to they're implement it because, when, because it's just like when he put in the uh, first travel ban. He didn't consult with the Department of Homeland Security. He just said no Muslims enter the country. Uh, or people from these countries, rather, uh, you know, cannot enter the country. And so suddenly there was chaos at all the airports because they were keeping permanent residents from coming in, people with visas from coming in, uh, even some citizens from coming in. It was just a mess because there had been nothing set ahead of time to, to lay out the groundwork of how anything is going to get accomplished. From the California ruling, let's go to the U.S. Supreme Court ruling. No doubt a robust endorsement of the president's immigration policies. And people are asking, does this open the door to more travel bans? Absolutely. Because if, if you can argue that uh, all these countries are, are, are to be banned for reasons of national security, and I'm always puzzled by that because if I recall Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, the guys who did 9-11, they were all from Saudi Arabia. They were not from any of those countries, and Saudi Arabia is not on the travel ban. So, but still, you can, you can put that travel ban against anybody else you want, sitting there saying that this is, these, it's an issue of national security, that these people, that religion, that color, be kept out of the country. National security. And when the Supreme Court gives it the you know, lowest rational basis, which is kind of like, um, you know, if you're, if you're jumping over hurdles, it's the, it's the hurdle you can kind of step over. Because if you can find any reasonable rationale for, for upholding it, you got it. And that's what Judge Roberts did. However, you know, I mean, he's, he, he did say that the president has, you know, wide authority over these things. And they're not, they're not questioning the role of the president in, in doing this. However, he did kind of put down Trump's, uh, um, I don't know. Rhetoric? Rhetoric and his, uh, his standing compared to Bush, George Washington, and a whole host of other, other presidents. That goes back to the whole subjective versus objective well, issue that the California judge rule. Well, President Trump is nothing but subjective. He, 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 uh, he, he never analyzes anything objectively. Let me ask you another question then. Uh, I read an article last night in Atlantic Magazine, and the tenor of that article was that this is really a green light to discriminate. Isn't it, it is. Of course it is. Because you can, you can argue anything's national security. You know, it's, 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 that, it's that, you know, I forget who did that saying. It was somebody, I think, who came through Nazi Germany. You know, if they, you know, first they came for the, the you know, this kind of people, and we didn't say anything because it was those kind of people. Then they came for those kind of people, and they didn't say anything. And then they came for those, and we still didn't say anything, and then they came for us. Right. And then there's, you know, Korematsu versus the United States. Uh, Justice Sotomayor said, this is just like that. Justice Roberts said, no. And that's a whole other issue and a whole other discussion. Rebecca Black, thank you very much for your insight. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it.